Hello everyone, Briximus Prime back at it again, and today we're going to be doing a Throwback Thursday retro review on a Tuesday. And today we are going to be taking a look at the original Generation 1 Soundwave. And yeah, this is not Soundwave's box. I just grabbed whatever retro-styled G1 box I had, and this was all I had on hand. But hey, at least it comes with its own removable dust feature. That's pretty cool. But just for the heck of it, here's a JPEG of Soundwave's original box. Authentic Transformers, eject these nuts. First off, he does come with his blue shoulder cannon right here, which does look pretty good. It's got the sticker on it, which is, uh, in traditional fashion, uh, peeling off at the seams. And overall, nothing much really to say about this. And then he also has his long blue rifle and it does have this removable uh chrome missile piece you only need one of these for the weapon but for some reason he comes with three of these and i don't know why and then he also comes with the buzzsaw cassette one miss comes one misconception people have had about the Generation 1 Soundwave is that Laserbeak was not the cassette that was included. It was actually Buzzsaw, even though this is the character who didn't really get that much prominence in modern media. But overall, as it is, I do love the golden-looking cassette here with all those, uh, you know, the recreated stickers and everything on this guy to really make him look like an actual cassette. And then this guy comes with these accessories, which make the jet boosters that he has in his robot mode, which we'll get to later. So we'll save him for later. And once you got this out of the gun, it doesn't go anywhere. Fantastic. And the, once you got these all collapsed up it, as these cylinders here, we can just open up Soundwave's battery case and we can just place those right in there. <laughs> You can always place that battery cover on there, and now we can pretend he has real batteries. And speaking of pretend, he also has a little clip right here, so now that he's in his Walkman mode, you can now actually pretend that you have one strapped onto your belt. Yippee! And the Walkman mode here does feature some nice details, like this golden stripe going around the window, the Decepticon sticker, all these nice little decals and realistic buttons and features on this, even a twisting dial right there and a sliding up on an off switch, and just overall some nice details all around. And of course, like mentioned before, you can have the traditional gimmick of opening that up, placing his cassette within, and now we can just pretend and make believe once again. Yippee! But again, all those Chrome Extra bits have absolutely nowhere to go. Zero out of ten? Yeah, playing pretend with this is fun and all, but what do they think I am? Five? Don't answer that, because the answer is obviously yes. And now for comparisons, I'm going to treat this as kind of like a sound wave through the years kind of thing. Now, if now I'm not going to be able to show all sound waves from throughout the years because I don't own all sound waves. So if there's a certain one you were hoping I was going to show off, it's because I'm really broke, okay? Also, speaking of other um, Generation 1 reissue cassettes, I do also happen to have the reissues of Ravage, Laserbeak, and Frenzy. And yes, I am aware of what color this is. We are not starting this argument today. And yeah, periodically throughout the review, I might be using some of these guys interacting with these two. Here he is with Siege Soundwave. Here he is with Dark of the Moon Studio Series Soundwave. Transformers Reactivate Video Game Soundwave. Core Class Soundwave. Shattered Glass Soundwave. Transformers Prime Soundwave. And then finally, the Bumblebee Movie Soundwave. And now with those comparisons out of the way, let's now get into these guys, you know, pretty simple transformations. More than meets the eye. I am doing reviews for your amusement and I hope I don't get demonetized. And here's now taking a look at Soundwave and Buzzsaw in robot mode. Of course, you can complete the look by giving these guys their proper accessories. 
Going over Buzzsaw very briefly, I like the Decepticon sticker on his forehead, the golden eyes right there. And overall, just the gold stickers and everything highlight on this figure a lot, especially with these nice chrome thrusters there on his back. And overall, he's not a bad toy. He's a very nice little fidgety toy and a very nice companion to go along with Soundwave. I don't know what it is, but I feel like this figure would look better in red. Hmm. Now taking a look at Generation 1 Soundwave's head, uh, I'm not going to judge it too harshly because this is the face that gave us the Decepticon logo and it's what inspired the Generation 1 cartoon character, but of course this face does look a little off on some angles, he is a bit smushed, but overall this is one of the coolest looking head designs for a Transformer, those yellow visor glasses, the silver mouth guard, and just that head crest, and ugh, such a classic. That is, that face is a statement. And moving down the rest of the body, the rest of this guy is pretty faithful to what we normally see for Soundwave. He still has his window chest, as we saw earlier, but now we've got the new detail of these stickers on the shoulders, and his forearms also look pretty good as well. Those chrome buttons have now carried over down here to the abdomen, and overall I like the stickers that are on this, and they're currently peeling off in classic retro foil sticker fashion. He's got some nice die-cast metal feet right there to fully make this a dedicated reissue. Die-cast construction! It's a lost art. And overall, this guy's not got nothing really going on on the back, though the clip thing still is here and is still fully functional. Going over the posability on these guys, this guy's got two little hinge joints here that allow him to do some He's also got double hinge joints right here in the wings that allow for all kinds of in and out movement going on in there. But that is pretty much it for Buzzsaw. Soundwave has a swivel at the head due to transformation. He can look up <laughs> that far. His shoulders can rotate a full 360. He's got a backwards butterfly joint due to transformation. He's got a nice bicep elbow right there. And then his wrists don't really do anything. His legs can kick forward that far. They cannot kick back. They can't move outward at all. And then he does get a backwards knee joint. And then his feet just go up and down. With that kind of posability, 0 out of 10. Pretty basic articulation on this guy, but hey, that's just that's just G1 being G1. Trust me, this is some of the better posability on some figures. But of course, these, these 80s toys were not made for posability back in the day. These were made to be cool. And Soundwave definitely is the epitome of that statement. Soundwave's design has always been cool, no matter what. I have never met a single person who has actually hated Soundwave's design. And again, here's his Generation 1 Laserbeak, Generation 1 Ravage, and then, and then the Generation 1 Rumble. I mean Frenzy. I mean Rumble. Shit! And these guys complement Soundwave very well. It would, it would be nice to finally get the rest of the set, though. He is with Siege Soundwave, Shattered Glass Soundwave, Prime Soundwave, Transformers Reactivate Soundwave, Core Class Soundwave, Dark of the Moon Bayverse Soundwave, and finally Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Soundwave. And that is pretty much it from our review on the original Generation 1 Soundwave. <clears throat> the reissue. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to describe the way I feel about this figure because to me it's kind of more like a novelty toy because again this is something I have not grown up with. I don't feel that nostalgia factor about this toy because I did not grow up with this toy in any way shape or form and so I just kind of don't really care as much as some people. That being said I do care because it is Soundwave. This is the roots of Soundwave. This is where he originated from. This is what he looked like in his old Diaclone micro change form. And overall, I think it's a fantastic toy. As a kid, I would have gone bonkers for this thing. But I love the figure. I think it's a great novelty toy and everything, because again, to me, it's more of a novelty rather than, an, rather than a nostalgia piece. 
And overall, I just think it's cool. Like, the, pl plain and simple. So, overall, if I had to give this figure a rating, i give it a very solid 10 out of 10. I mean, I can't really give a rating on this toy because... It's, a gen it's an original Generation 1 sound wave. Literally, the shoulders on which I stand is part of this toy. Because Transformers would not be what it is now and what fandom it is that I'm part of without this toy being a part of it. And so, it's kind of hard to critique this toy. I mostly was just making this review as not a way to share my opinion on this figure, but just something to do for fun for the 40th anniversary of Transformers. And again, what better way to do it than with Soundwave, one of the most iconic characters of all time. So that is basically it for this review. If you guys liked it, give me a like on the video. Comment below what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel for more Transformers and action figure videos. And I'll catch you guys next time.